For those who live through what is sometimes called the psychedelic revolution, Terence McKenna is a legend. Once referred to as the Timothy Leary of the 90s, Terence attained iconic status as a radical philosopher, futurist, cultural critic, and raconteur. His unorthodox ideas about the evolutionary and cultural impact of psychedelic drugs shocked many and resonated with many others. As Terence's younger brother and only sibling, I grew up with him in a small town in western Colorado during the 50s and 60s. Traveling together in the Colombian Amazon in 1971 with a few other kindred spirits, we called our band the Brotherhood of the Screaming Abyss. Our adventures inspired many of Terence's unorthodox ideas about time and the nature of history, which in turn became fertile ground for certain apocalyptic beliefs about the year 2012. Terence died in 2000, never to learn if his predictions about the end of the world, in his particular sense, were true. Since then, he has achieved a kind of virtual immortality, his voice and image as near as the click of a mouse. Ghost-like, he haunts the internet, a talking head on YouTube, the articulate prophet of an end time he didn't live to see. In addition to true hallucinations, Terence authored or co-authored several books, including Food of the Gods, The Archaic Revival, The Evolutionary Mind, and The Invisible Landscape, among others. His wide-ranging thoughts and observations remain as fresh and timely as though uttered yesterday. He lives on as the beloved paterfamilias of a younger generation of psychedelic seekers, though most were still in diapers when Terence was at the peak of his career. Even on the cusp of uncovering the mysteries of existence, my brother and I managed to keep a sense of humor. It helped to be Irish. We didn't know what we were searching for beyond the conviction that it was a profound insight and that it would change us and everything forever. We were right on both counts, though not in the ways we imagined. We as a species are going to live in the imagination. The imagination is the future frontier for humanity. So it may be a combination of drugs, uh, techniques, technologies, attitude shifts, uh, linguistic redesign of our uh, language assumptions. All of this may be necessary to propel us into a world whose rules are not the laws of physics, but the laws of the human imagination. Liberate yourself from the illusion of culture. Take responsibility for what you think and what you do, a lot of people are going to be very anxious because change raises anxiety in people. And people who have limited opportunities to educate themselves because of culturally inflicted abuse are scared because they can sense that everything familiar is giving way, but they don't want to embrace the unimaginable. These people need to be reassured. They need to be reassured by example and by hearing optimistic and reasonable rhetoric about the future. Selling the future as an eight alarm fire, which is how the media does it, only makes the same future impossible. So we need a responsible approach to thinking about the future, and it means taking personal responsibility for the ideas, the means that you push into society, and for the images that we share among ourselves. And you are constantly bombarded with images which disempower, divide, confuse, and, and, and make crazy, basically. The way out, then, is personal responsibility 
new operating systems downloaded from outside of culture, which means from the deeper wisdom of the psychedelic plants, and then a commitment to community and a motto of to the future without fear. Without fear. Thank you very much.